Welcome to this week's episode of Now Loading. I'm BioMonkey. And... And what? It's Ant's line. You know Ant's not here. What? Oh. Oh, yeah. Welcome to this week's episode of Now Loading. And I'm Death Vanquished. <sighs> Can you let me finish? Nice to finally beat all the DLC for Saints Row 2. Yeah, but it really bothers me how the DLC ends on a cliffhanger that's not really ever resolved in Saints Row the Third. What? Oh yeah, the guy who betrays you in part one, you track down in part two, gets away in the DLC, but you never really find him in Saints Row 3. I want to kill Dex. You do know that Volition just announced a new standalone expansion for Saints Row 3. Ooh, ooh. It's about going into a virtual reality world and becoming a superhero. God damn it, Volition. I want my fucking revenge. Being a superhero in Saints Row will be awesome. Oh, yeah. Totally. Man, these game sales really peter out after the first month of a game's release, barring any big sales. Yeah, with the recent trend of games with online passes and exclusive DLC, only the early adopters will buy within the game's first 30 days. We need online passes to make people buy new games, and we need exclusive DLC to get people to pre-order those games. I think that releasing games at $60 and steadily decreasing the cost while more DLC comes out will eventually lead to more people buying games at a steadier pace. How so? Think about it. If you go into GameStop and see that they have Star Wars Force Unleashed for $30 knowing that I have a $60 investment on top of that worth of DLC. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to purchase the game at $30. Might as well wait for the Game of the Year version of the game. Ah, <sighs> Game of the Year editions. What a nice way to get a last little bump before the game is lost to the bargain bin. Don't forget the complete or ultimate editions for games that aren't quite Game of the Year material. Oh, speaking of which, those uh, guys at Deep Silver want to make more money off of Dead Island. Game of the Year edition? Doesn't somebody have to give it a Game of the Year award? I think Game Informer gave it to one of those uh, most disappointing. It, it still counts. Call of Duty 2 is the only decent shooter at launch. Might as well pick it up. Hmm, Call of Duty 3. Kind of sick of War 2 shooters, but that keeps telling me how good it is and to try it. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare? Sounds pretty cool. Should tie me over until Battlefield comes to the Xbox. World at War. Do we really need another Call of Duty, let alone another World War 2 Call of Duty? Modern Warfare 2 again? Pass. Black Ops? Is Activision even trying? Come on! Just give us a freaking break for one year. Modern Warfare 3. Really? Come on, people. Is a yearly subscription for Call of Duty really worth $60? Oh, and you can opt in to pay an extra $50 a year on Call of Duty Elite. Yippee! Black Ops 2. I just can't be mad anymore. Can't, can't be mad. Free market gets what the free market wants. Hey, what's up? Bio! Save me from buying Black Ops 2. 
Every year since World at War, I've promised myself that I wouldn't get another Call of Duty game. But every year I do. Yeah, I wait for it to go on sale for $40 and I refuse to buy any DLC. But it sucks me in every year. Save me! You're on your own. Bye! Larry? Oh god! Oh, oh, Aaron, you scared me. It's okay. I just came up here with an amazing idea. Okay. You know how everybody loves getting locked into those two-year contracts with their phone companies? Unable to upgrade until the company allows them to? No. By everybody, I meant AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. Oh, then, yeah, I guess they love them. You get to lock your consumer on an inferior product for two years on a contract that they can't break without penalty. Yeah, it really sucks for the consumer. We need to do this for the Xbox 360. Why do we always gain the support of our fans only to squander it? Oh, speaking of fans, we're getting rid of all things inside Xbox. Even your show, Slugger. Okay, what do I even do here anymore? 